Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please feel free to write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com if you have any questions regarding to this video or any other videos that I have posted in the past. If you have any videos that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. In this video, I want to demonstrate to you how to cook many different ingredients in the same wok in one cooking session. Now, this is particularly uh, challenging when you have to cook something like ribs. Now, this is a spare rib cut into small pieces. It's a very popular in Chinese stir frying. And uh, I bought this spare ribs in a Chinese grocery store in Chicago. And I love this spare rib. Now, the reason I want to demonstrate this spare rib to you is that, as you uh, all know, that uh, ingredients like this, such as a spare rib, will take longer time to cook. So how do you incorporate all the ingredients together? In this case, I'm going to cook a meal that's using the different vegetables as well. And this method is known as sequential stir-frying. The concept actually is very simple. Uh, basically, you cook different ingredients for a different amount of time uh, based on when you add the ingredients to the wok. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the spirit more as a condiment rather than main ingredients. So I'm going to use only about maybe 8 ounces of the spare ribs. And of the package that I purchased, uh, I'm going to store the rest of them away in a Ziploc sandwich bag. I'm going to freeze them. And in this way, I can thaw them out in about 10 or 12 minutes when I'm ready to use it. As this dish is a good demonstration of the different possibility in stir frying and how you can uh, take advantage of this technique allow you to cook everything together. Uh, in fact, uh, I had a question from a viewer and he asked me, uh, how did you cook everything together and how did you avoid some of the ingredients from being overcooked or undercooked? Well, this is a demonstration of using this technique. So this will save you time and it will also allow you uh, to make a one-dish meal with many different ingredients. I'm going to cook this dish in my Cucina 14-inch stainless steel wok. I'm going to start out with about 2 tablespoons of canola oil. Uh, I'm going to uh, spot season the wok using my spot seasoning method, which basically I heat up the oil uh, to its smoking point, and then I let it smoke gently for about uh, 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to saute some uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, fermented black soybean. Now this fermented black soybean is very similar to soy sauce in flavor, but the flavor is a little bit more intense and less salty. And this actually is a wonderful condiment to season the dish. Uh, the, this uh, fermented black soybean most frequently, you probably had it before uh, in the famous uh, Chinese uh, dish known as Mapo Tofu, and they always use this uh, fermented black soybean. By sauteing it first, I actually able to reduce the flavor of the fermented black soybean, but it's more intense when you bite into it, and this is exactly uh, how my wife like it. Now, I coat the uh, spare rib with cornstarch. Uh, this will give the spare ribs a uh, light breading, a slight crispy texture, not too much. Now, this dish turned out to be one of my favorite stir-fried dish. I love this kind of ribs. And in fact, when I was growing up in Hong Kong, I remember uh, this is one of my favorite meal. Now, in here, um, I do not cook it very often because I cannot get this spare rib easily unless I go to a uh, Chinese grocery store, which they always have this spare rib. But uh, later, now I discovered that I can go to my local butcher shop and uh, ask them to cut it up for me. So if you are interested to replicate this dish, uh, you can try to go to your local butcher shop, and I think they will be ha very happy uh, to cut this up for you. Now, this is the benefit of home cooking. Uh, because uh, I can cook anything I want, uh, this dish you probably cannot find anywhere other than if you cook it yourself. And for me, this is a great opportunity, and I love the cooking the spirit with this approach. Okay, now I'm going to start to add the vegetable. By now, the spirit is probably about uh, 50 to 70% done, and it will finish cooking after I cook the vegetables. Now, this is the idea of the sequential stir-frying. Uh, you uh, cook the ingredients that require the longest time uh, first, 
and then you gradually add other ingredients that would take longer, a little bit less time to cook. In this case, I added a small amount of eggplant. Again, the beauty of advanced prepping is that you can use many different kinds of food ingredients, in this case, different kinds of vegetables. Uh, if you do not have advanced prepping, uh, you might end up using uh, all eggplants or too much, but because I have advanced prepping, I can select pick and choose of what other ingredients want to include. So uh, next, I add some uh, baby bok choy. Now, uh, the baby bok choy, as I have described earlier, is already in my advanced prepping. Uh, the next one I add is some shiitake mushroom. Uh, this shiitake mushroom is come dehydrated. So I hydrate it, and uh, uh, I can keep this in the refrigerator for up to about uh, seven days to a week, and they are great for stir frying, and uh, they are actually great for also in the using in a soup. So um, all the ingredients I added at this point, I added in the order of how long I want to cook them. And again, uh, because all the ingredients are cut up into small pieces, they only take a very small amount of time to cook. But the variations of when you're going to add them uh, can make a big difference in terms of texture as well as the, their doneness. Next, I add some uh, thinly sliced carrot. Uh, again, as you can see here, now everything cooks really quickly, and um, I gently stir fry everything together. Uh, you notice that at the bottom there has hardly any oil. And somebody asked me how much oil you should add during your stir frying, and my rule of thumb is that uh, by the time when you finish cooking, there should be no oil left at the bottom of the wok. And next, I add some uh, fish ball. Now, I have this fish ball, usually I use it in a hot pot, but since I have them available on hand, I decided I'm going to add it to this uh, dish. I cut them into thin slices. Now, this fish ball are already pre-cooked, so basically that's why I add it way at the end. And uh, in fact, uh, just a quick few stir-frying is more just to warm them up to the temperature that I want. Again, I want to point out to you is that the beauty of home cooking is that you can do almost anything you want. You can create a combination of the ingredients exactly how you like it. And this is basically what I am doing. Now, the dish is now almost done. The next step is that I'm going to add some the purple cabbage. Now, the purple cabbage, I really like them when they have that nice crispy texture. And this is the reason I add them way toward the end. Uh, so they will only cook very lightly. Uh, I think one of the greatest um, cooking approach is that to create contrast of different ingredients between softness and crunchy and crispy nature, and this will make the dish far more interesting. Okay, the final ingredients I'm going to add is some color bell pepper. This is uh, the small bell pepper. I add them so that it will give a nicer, fresh flavor as well as texture to the dish. Now, I pay a lot of attention to the texture of different ingredients because I believe that if you have the right combination of texture, it makes the dish far more interesting. And in this case, uh, because the uh, complexity of the flavor, you can use only very small amount of salt. And now the dish is almost done. And next, I'm going to add some Shaoxing cooking wine. Uh, I add the wine way at the end uh, because if I add them too early, the flavor of the wine will burn away. In this case, I can still taste a mild flavor uh, for the wine. So the final step is season this dish. I'm just going to use some seasoning uh, the sauces that I have on hand. First of all, I'm going to just add about one tablespoon of a sweet chili sauce. I don't need very much because the dish already has great flavor. And then I'm going to add another, uh, probably about half tablespoon of a teriyaki sauce. Again, they are pre-made sauces. And normally, I don't use pre-made sauces. I normally use oyster sauce and hoisin sauce as a combination. But since I have this sauce available in my pantry, I just want to use it up. And uh, so, um, a quick, quick, quick stir, the dish is done. So this is a demonstration of how you cook a dish with different ingredients. And by using this sequential stir-frying technique, you can cook multiple ingredients in a single dish by adjusting the timing when, you're going, when you are adding these ingredients to the wok. 
uh, you can control the texture things that you add first such like as the pork rib uh, you want to make sure that the pork is done and then uh, followed by eggplant uh, which you want to cook them a little bit longer and baby bok choy and when you use this kind of technique you will be able to uh, basically uh, create any type of vegetable medley that you want okay uh, i hope to, that you find this useful uh, i post a video each day uh, to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine uh, using my fast cooking system so your home cooking will be practical efficient creative and fun if you would like to learn more about my fast cooking system please subscribe to this youtube channel uh, so keep on cooking i will see you tomorrow